This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. All right. We don't realize the deceiving spirits that are out there. We don't realize the spirits of distraction that are out there. Things that we look at in society are things that make us feel good. There used to be an old song when I was a little kid, Dr. Feel Good. That's what we're looking for. A lot of us, when we look for God, we look for God to be Dr. Feel Good. So we assume that Dr. Feel Good includes yoga, crystals, all kind of goodies out there that we can we can consult with all kind of occultic things because after all it's harmless we're not doing harm to anybody else so we're just trying to get some answers and in and what we end up doing basically is insulting God's intelligence and not trusting in him at all we're going to find our own way in the name of Jesus. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So if I call the psychic hotline, I'm going to look for the Christian psychics. In the name of Jesus. Right. <laughs> See, there are things some of you consult with that you don't realize are the furthest thing from God. This is a little sensitive. Some of you born again Christians are going to the unsaved, to the courthouse, to have people who are unsaved, filled with devils, judge your case against another brother or sister in Christ. Instead of handling it with God's people under the anointing and unction of the Holy Ghost. That to God is ludicrous, it's blasphemous, it's ridiculous for you to go to the world for answers. What did the angel say to Mary at the tomb when Jesus had risen from the dead? He asked her a question. Why seek ye the living among the dead? And that's what we do. As born-again Christians, we consult with dead things, dead idols, lifeless answers. We consult with lies, expecting to get our lives in order the way we want our lives to be. Wow. So then we wonder why things go helter-skelter in our lives. When we disobey God's word because of an idol in our life. See, there are things we can't let go of. Things that, that we don't trust anywhere else but in our own hands. And because of that, we are living our lives in a way that does not exalt the body of Christ. It doesn't edify the body. It edifies you. And you don't realize, in a lot of ways... The man in the mirror is another one of your idols. Whoa! That's deep. We don't realize that self can be our biggest idol. Self, selfishness, self-centeredness, self-absorption. Me, 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 for me, for me, for me. 
All the best laid plans of mice and men are all laid out for me. I'm good. See ya, wouldn't want to be ya, but I'm good. Okay, so we'll leave that between you and God. Then there's others of you who have issues with your family members, your friends, your co-workers. Why? Because your idol goes everywhere you go. What idol is that, you ask? The idol of pride image, persona. I'm going to make sure they see me the way I want them to see me. I'm going to turn my best side to the camera. See me, world? Yes. I know you're waiting for me. So I'm going to present myself as God's gift to you. You need me. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some things I will not allow. And the reason I don't allow is because I got to take care of my pride. Idol. Idol worship. We don't get that. See, anytime something means more to you, so much more that it literally is agonizingly painful to obey the way God wants you to do it, that's the time to say, God, help me take out the trash. What is your trash? Your idols. Help me. Some of these I'm not sure I really want to let go of. Help me take out the trash. See, when the Bible talks about in the last days, We'll be lovers of our own selves. Trust me. For example, let's do this. Let's do a little, a little litmus test. Holy Ghost litmus test. If I have $500, now you know money is a big idol in this country. If I have $500 and Lynn makes way more than I do, but Lynn is in a quandary because for some reason, the time of day, the time of week, she cannot get her hands on her money. But she's got to take an emergency flight because somebody on the East Coast is in the hospital or whatever. There's some major emergency that's got to be handled yesterday. And she cannot get her hands on the funds. And the airport won't take her credit card. And she calls me, and I got my $500 lined up for my vacation. I got places to go, people to see, things to do. Yeah. And I've been waiting on this for two years. And she tells me she's got an emergency. Am I going to release that $500 that I don't need? I may not have anything else but the $500 laying around, but I got it. And it will more than take care of her plane ticket. Am I going to release that $500 and say this is more important than me? Or am I going to tell her, sorry, Charlie, let's pray for you. Let's pray the Lord provides. That's an idol. If it's on my part and I don't tell her and I don't offer her. And if it's an emergency, I should not do it as a loan. I should love her enough to give her the $500. That's right. Vacation waited five years. It can wait five more. It ain't the end of the world. But she's got something she got to handle. Or it will be the end of the world for somebody and her family. Do you see what I mean? There are people out there that will see you on the road walking. They got a big old limo and they will turn the other way. I've seen people do it to me at the bus stop. Turn the other way. Go into the same place, mind you. Choir rehearsal. 
All they had to do to go out of their way was pull over to the curb. Oh, and I get in, and they pull back into traffic. That's as far out of their way they have to go. But rather than do that, they're at choir rehearsal, and I'm waiting for the bus so I can ride and walk to the same place they're already going to. And I see them purposefully look the other way so they can act like they didn't see me. It's so obvious. See, that's an idol. That's selfishness. I'm telling you, the things that we don't want to relinquish, the things we don't want to share of ourselves. Okay, then we go to affections and truth breakers. How many of you have said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that on this date, and you and I are going to hook up, and I'm going to do that for you. And that day comes, that day goes, and nobody hears from you. They call your number, can't reach you. That's a truce breaker. All right. Um, let's go on the false accusers and incontinent. Many of you will accuse people of doing stuff they wouldn't even know what you were talking about if you said it to their face. Mm -hmm. Be surprised how judgmental we can be over stuff we have no clue about. Incontinent. Let's go there. Incontinent. Picture a baby in a diaper. A baby is automatically incontinent. They've got to learn and be trained to control their movements until they get to the pot. But while they're in the baby stage, they're going to mess on themselves every time. Why? They are incontinent. Incontinent is another word for lack of self-control. How many of you can control your mouth? How many of you can control your temper? How many of you can control your urges? How many of you can control your habits? Mm-hmm. Areas where you lack discipline. How many of you are trying to control? All right. Now, let's go down the list. Fierce. I want to look that word up while we're right here together. Come on, dictionary. Let's see what Webster has to say about the word fierce. I love looking up words because you get so much out of them, especially when you go to the thesaurus. Let's type it in, shall we? F-I-E-R-C-E, -E, fierce. All right. Ferocious, vicious, aggressive, mm, cutthroat. Wow. How many of us have that in us? Whoa, boy. <laughs> that is, I'm, I'm just naming a few. Violent, forceful, tempestuous, severe, extreme, dreadful. When you walk in the room and they see you're angry, <laughs> how do people respond to you? Are they ready to run? Fly to another planet because they don't want to be anywhere near you when you're ready to go off. Whoa. Yeah. Does that represent God? Or do you know who it represents? See, those are the things, the little, they can say the little foxes spoil the vine. Those are the things we don't pay much attention. I've always been like that. I've always, I've always been bent toward that. You know, I've been like that since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Then you get those that are high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Now, you know, uh, a lot of times we don't realize God may get two or three hours if he's lucky. I hate to use that word with God in the same sentence. I'm being facetious. If he's lucky, he might get two or three hours out of the whole week from us. Worth of conversation, reading God's word, and prayer. All put in together. 
two or three hours, maybe, tops. Mm -hmm. But you do a calculating analysis of how many hours that idiot box get, gets from you. How many hours the phone, you yak, 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 yak on that phone, seven days a week. You find people to call. How many of you cannot sit still without being on the phone talking to somebody? Can you take a walk down the street without dialing somebody's number so you can make the time pass quicker? Can you sit at a bus stop? Can you sit in your car for any length of time without being on the phone? You yak, 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 yak. But have you taken any of that time to talk to God? See, we don't realize how lukewarm we have become in our walk with the Lord. Yes, we have a form of godliness. We observe the Sabbath. We go to church. We call each other. We're born-again Christians. Pray for this. Pray for that. Give each other a little counsel, a little pat on the back, a little word of encouragement. But where do most of your hours where are most of your hours committed to? When you're frustrated, what's the first thing you do with your frustration? When you're bored, what do you do with your boredom? How do you fill that time? Hmm. Yeah. See, there are a lot of experiences we miss out on because we turn to the dead things of life, seeking the living. We want to feel alive. We want to get in a groove. We want to feel jazz, happy. We want to be a little happy camper. Yeah. So we look for our teddy bear. God's not in the teddy bear. God's not in your wallet. You hear what I'm saying? He's everywhere. We know that. I'm, I'm making a point when I say it like that. All right, now let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. All right, here we go. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, excuse me. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. Wow. And they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of the light and the children of the day, and we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken and drunken in the night. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a minute. Listen, imagine this. I'm just painting the picture so you understand. That does not just mean cop and Z's when it says sleep. Have you ever seen people walk down the street and you look and you say, hi, how you doing or whatever? And you say, boy, that's what you call a space cadet. I know we've heard that term. That person is sleepwalking. Sleepwalking through life. They're caught up with all the things. See, y'all thought I was going to talk about the devil, the mark of the beast and all that. But that ain't our problem. Our problem is what's happening right here. It ain't your problem unless you let it be your problem. As long as you don't open the door to that crap, you're all right. But we got all this stuff we got to deal with. And we're worried about the mark of the beast. Yeah, yeah, you need to be aware. You need to know what's going on. But firstly, you need to know what's going on with you. Because no matter what happens with the mark of the beast, no matter what happens when Jesus busts through those clouds, as soon as you become aware that he's there, it's too late for you. 
If you haven't handled and addressed the issues that God wants us to handle. And yes, he led me to the scripture that said, be ye holy for I am holy. If you don't handle those things now, they will handle you right on out of the kingdom. You know how the ushers do in church? Come on over here. We got a seat for you right here. That's the way the devil's going to do you when Jesus splits the clouds. Mm -hmm. You're going to be waiting for him to raise you up and here come a demon. Come on, baby. We got something for you right here. Just come sit over here. This, this is where we got for you. No, 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 but I'm a Christian. No, come on, come on, come on. Don't waste the Lord's time. He's busy getting his people. Now we get now. See, that's going to surprise many of you. See, these ideas that come to my mind, these little samples, they are coming straight from God. They're not, it's not something I wrote down and tried to figure out, now what am I going to use as an example? I don't take notes like that. I want the Holy Spirit to show me. And I never saw that before. When we're waiting for Jesus to come pull us up and here come a demon, like an usher, ushering us over somewhere else. Because we ain't going up there with them. See, that's scary right there. That's a scary thought. I don't want that kind of surprise coming to me. And I don't put it beyond happening. So I'm always asking God, show me what is not right in me. Now, we're in the last days. We know that. So the question to you is, what are you going to do when they're saying peace and safety? Tiptoe through the tulips. No. It's prayer time. Because you know when they say peace and safety, the Bible says sudden destruction coming. So there are going to be a lot of things catching us unaware. If we're not careful, we're going to be caught by surprise. Now, this is what's coming to me right now. Some of you, as you interact with people, you got to be careful right now. Because, or people better be careful around you. Because sudden destruction may not come through a bomb. Sudden destruction may not come through a meteorite. Sudden destruction may not come through a tsunami, a tornado, an earthquake. Sudden destruction might come through your family member. Pow! Everybody did. Where'd they come from? That was the nicest person in the family. See? Demons are being leashed, unleashed right now. They're being sent out like swarms of locusts, and you don't see it because you're a yakety 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 yak yakety yak yakety yak yakety yak, and you're just going on that phone. Yakety yak, don't come back. You are so caught up in trivial conversations. You're so caught up in running here, running this errand, looking at that, window shopping for the other, running to this person's house, grabbing this, grabbing that, making this money, making that money. Uh, you're doing whatever it takes. You're going to the gym. You're going to the movies. You're going to your boyfriend's house. You're going to your girlfriend's house. Whatever you're doing, you're sitting up in one of the movies you have no business sitting at. You're at the computer. Well, what's harmful about the computer? Porn. And while your eyes are moving, baby, your hands are working. And you are so caught up. Jesus could come tap you on your shoulder and you'd be like, wait, 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 just a minute. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. He come and gone, and you didn't even know it. In La La Land, this life can overtake you in such a way that it's like walking through life blindfolded, moon walking through life asleep. Now that's deep right there. Moon walking through life 
and you're asleep on top of it. In La La Land, you don't have a clue. You don't know what the heck is going on. Because you're not watchful. You're not looking. You're not aware. You're not praying. You're not hearing the Holy Spirit tell you, pray for this. Pray for that. This is going on over there. Why did you have that weird dream? Because God's showing you what he wants you to pray for. But no, you're in such la-la land. Oh, I had the weirdest dream last night, girl. Blah, 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 blah. You ain't prayed a prayer. You haven't asked the Lord about it. You're just down the road. What the Lord showed me in a dream this week. I'm going to share this with you. This was a person who was in ministry. I mean, a true blue. And what God is saying is you don't know anybody you think you know. People think they know you and you think you know them. But I'm the only one who knows. And this person with a great reputation was at a bar. Balling the woman out who owned the business. Walked over and balled the husband out and started punching him bam, on the top of his head. Knocked him down to the ground and kept punching him in his head. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I? And I was so, I was so, I, I was so upset. And I was screaming, you're wrong, you're wrong. You're, you're a messenger of God. How can you do this? this? You don't do anybody like that. You need to ask him to forgive you. You're wrong. Oh, I, I, I couldn't stand seeing the poor man being beaten down like that. And he wasn't trying to defend himself. He was trying to apologize. And this was a servant of God. See, we're out there looking at the president, the, the political party. We're looking at the medical industry that's trying to depopulate. We know that. Trying to depopulate the whole planet. We know that so the elite can have everything to themselves. The elites are their own God with their own money as their God as well. But you're sitting up here with the people right in your midst committing crimes. Kids being kidnapped, being used as sex slaves right down the street from where you live. Do you know about it? No. Why? You're caught up in you. God has to show you what's going on for you to pray. Are you praying? No. Why? Because my favorite program is on. And not only that, I got to run to the store. They got these new boots. Oh, they are so sharp. I got to see if they got those boots at that store. I got to get online and see if I can find that latest cell phone. That cell phone they got now. Oh, that is jamming. God's trying to get you to intercede for the victims of human trafficking. God's trying to get you to intercede for the victims of abuse. God's trying to get you to intercede for the widows that don't have anybody to help them. God's trying to get you to intercede for the women that are being beaten, for the kids that are being beaten, for the drug addicts that were forced to into drug addiction, for the prostitutes that were forced into prostitution. Those that have no voice, but we got a voice. Yeah, girl, he was so fine. Woo! I had to fan myself. Mm -mm -mm. Always sitting up there looking at that brick house while the wife is at home cooking your dinner. And you talking about, you talking with the fellas, laughing and joking. Ooh, what we could do with that. Totally out of touch with what God's trying to bring to your attention. Praise Jesus or out of one side of your mouth and out the other side of your mouth. Mm -hmm. She's a brick. Ouch. Mighty, mighty. Letting it all hang out. What kind of life are you guys living for God? What do you think God wants from you? God doesn't want a part-time lover. He wants you to know what's coming. He does not want you hurt. He, he wants you to escape the wrath to come. 
He doesn't want you down here being persecuted. Pray that you escape it. But you got to get about your father's business. It ain't all about you and what you doing with your life. It's not all about me and my four and no more. <sighs> okay. I'm going to stop there because that's one of the things that we have to ask God, help us take our mouths off the altar, off the idol, you know, the, the idol stuff that we had around the temple and we are the temple of God. Yeah. Help us take the money, help us take self, help us take all kinds of stuff off that altar because your idols will make you lose out and half of you don't even know what your idols are or that you even have any. Hmm. If something happened to this, that, or them, would you still walk with the Lord? Question now. Question. Think about it. Woo, Father, help us. Help us understand what you're trying to alarm us of. Help us not moonwalk through life, blindfolded and asleep. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As we leave the sanctuary, as we go our separate ways, may God favor us upon thee. May he cover you with his grace. I'll be praying for you. Oh, please be praying for me. Me, yeah. May God keep us all in the palm of His hands. Till we're together again. Together again.